it's time to think outside the circle. Today we're going to give you an introduction into milling with G12.1 for making complex shapes and irregular shapes out of round bars. Let me show you how you do it. So first thing I'm going to do is show you the structure of our program and how we program our G12.1s. Now we'll go over to the screen here and I'll break down what each line's doing for you so you can do it at home. So the first thing we do, call our tool. Shut the main spindle off, can't index the spindle with the C-axis while it's running. It'll tell you it doesn't like it. Shut the spindle off, we're shifting the bar out to the tool so we can stub our tool up. Inches per minute. All our milling is done in inches per minute. You can't mill in inches per revolution because the spindle stopped. There are no revolutions, it's just gonna sit there. Inches per minute. Index to zero, M18, C0. G50 is a work shift. We're just shifting everything. It's like a belt and suspenders. Index to zero, shift all the rotation coordinates to zero. Everything's at zero, just for consistency. Turn our spindle on, 9,000 RPM. It's a new L32 Type 10. We got 9,000 RPM and we're using all of them. Rapid the bar out to the tool. Z minus 250, it's just a clearance move. We're just approaching the tool with the material. And then here's the magic G12.1. G12.1 D0 E equals C. This is straight out of the book. You bought one of these machines, you have an instruction manual with it. G12.1 inches per minute again, just can't have too much safety. G17, we're gonna be milling in the X, Y work plane. We're gonna be milling on the end of the bar with X and Y. You can use different work planes. You can do your Z, Y, your X, Z. Those are different codes. For G12.1, we only ever use G17 just for milling on the end of the bars. And that's it. Below this parentheses, below this little comment line, everything is posted out of Mastercam. You can tool path it with a contour, you can uh, use dynamic, you could use OptiRough, posted right out of Mastercam, copy pasted into the program. Now there are some caveats. You have to get rid of a bunch of stuff in Mastercam unless you edit a post, which is what I did because we do so much G12.1 milling. I just wrote a post, or I edited a post to get rid of all the junk we don't need that the Haases want. So you have to get rid of a bunch of junk and all your Zs, all your Z moves out of Mastercam will be backwards. All your, what you want to be Z negative, Mastercam will post out as Z positive and you will miss one and you will rapid the bar into your tool when you're least expecting it and it'll scare you. So if you're going in there, always make sure you do a find and replace with your Zs to make sure that you flip them or go in your post and edit it. Flip your Zs. Your clearance moves should be Z minus. Z minus is away from the material. Z plus is into the material. You just want to make sure you have that straight so you don't bury your tools and break them. But yeah, after this, just scroll down. We got tool comp, we have diameter comp. You don't need length comp, get rid of that. But we're using our, our cutter compensation with our diameter comp. The machine says it doesn't like it, but it's a liar. We're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. We finish up, G40, cancel comp. Wrap it out, Z minus two, away from the end of the bar. And then we call it G13.1 to cancel our G12.1. What the G12.1 does, not only does it, and we're keeping this real basic, your G12.1 converts your rotational axis, your C axis, into a Y axis, so you can program with X, Y, all this is programmed X, Y, Z, straight out of Mastercam. And with the G12.1, it converts the C into a Y. So you can make square parts, triangular parts, oval parts, whatever kind of parts you want. G13.1 cancels that, returns you to a diametral programming. The G12.1 is all radial. It works just like a mill. Default mill post in Mastercam is all I use. Cancel our work shift up at the top, suck the bar back cancel our tool offset, shut the spindle off. Done, next tool. It's the same thing. It's got some work shifts in there, but it's, it's literally just the same chunk of code. Tool call, inches per minute, M18C0, turn the spindle on, push the bar out, G12.1, master cam. It's that simple. So now that I've gone through and explained the bare bones, meat and potatoes of how it works, now that we're done with all the behind the scenes stuff, we're gonna show you what you really want, which is chips flying. So we're in check mode, 
handle so I can narrate. Doing a pre-cut, the sub spindle's knocking out, tool three is facing off. We're bringing tool 12 up. This is our G0 approach move. Rapids up, it's already in G12.1. Does a rough cut, does a spring pass. Clearance move out, cancels the G12.1, it's calling the next tool. Tool 13, indexes to zero, does the rapid approach. It's in G12.1, it's milling. It's running a chamfer around the profile. Chamfer's a hole that's not there yet, and it's done, it's that fast. This isn't G12.1, this is just regular milling. And then we come in, synchronize, pick off, cut off, phase adjustments, another video for the future for picking off on irregular parts. And that's it. We'll reset it because we're running multiple parts per chuck. And then I'll grab the part out and show it to you. So here's a square part out of a round bar that we made with G12.1. If you're interested in learning more, or if you thought this was entertaining, like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Like, share, subscribe. Is that what the cool kids say these days? Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Don't even share it. Don't share it. Don't share it.